Good morning, it's Saturday morning and uh, again another week gone in lockdown. Um, do hope you're staying safe and well. Um, I just want to finish off this week by finishing the second of our I Am's and that's I Am the Light of the World. Um, so let's just uh, read this passage and uh, it's only a short reading but I want afterwards to read the next bit on because actually there's an effect of what happens when Jesus makes this statement when he says I am the light of the world and uh, I just want us to focus on that today I'm just put, changing the camera angle slightly um, and uh, I want us to think about the impact of what Jesus being our light is and I thought it'd be really nice just to have in the background uh, that lovely picture that uh, Chris has taken of the moon over the top of Ross uh, the church there at Ross and just shimmering into the river Wye um, and uh, it just reminds us of the power of light uh, and Jesus remember is is speaking he's been at the um, the Feast of Tabernacles uh, which is uh, the seven day celebration of how God takes care of his people in the wilderness oh. And they think about the, the fact that as, as they go through the wilderness, all the things that God did. And uh, one of those was he provided uh, a cloud to follow by day and a pillar of fire by night. And during the nights of, of the uh, festival of um, tabernacles, um, especially coming to the end, they would light these huge uh, oil menorahs that were based in the temple and they reckon that the light of that would light the whole city uh, because it was so bright and uh, it's 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 hardly surprising then that at the end of this uh, feast Jesus stands up and he says this and he is in we'll notice that he is in the temple courts when he's talking about this when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. There's something, and I think perhaps it's because we have so much uh, access to light in our world today that we sometimes forget the, uh, the influence uh, of uh, what light can do in darkness. Um, very rarely do we find ourselves in absolute pitch black darkness. Uh, I've often enjoyed taking groups to um, Big Pit uh, in um, Blind Avon and up the Welsh Valleys. It's, it's a tremendous place. If you've never been there and are able to get there once lockdown is over, can I just invite you to go because it's a fabulous fabulous experience of what mining, coal mining, would have been like. And uh, we actually get the opportunity to take um, groups of people down, down into the, 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 the mine that was there. It used to be a working mine, uh, it's now a museum, and you actually go down and you walk through those corridors, uh, sometimes squatting down because it's quite low. But one of the things that strikes me when we go and to do that trip is that we go into a, uh, uh, an area and uh, we've all got our AV lamps on, you know, with our, 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 on, on our helmets and uh, you've got your pack on the side and uh, you go in between it and every so often there are doors because it stops the build-up of gases and everything else and they can control the flow of air through the mines. And as the door shuts the one end and the door is shut the other end, often the, and, and the guide around is actually an ex-miner, who, someone who, who, whose job it was, was to go up and down those uh, um, lifts, sometimes for five, six hundred metres below ground. And then there were miles and miles of these tunnels. And uh, they just say, right, everyone turn out their lights. And you're just reminded of just how darkness is. You can be 30, 40 people in that area and you can't see anyone. And if everyone's quiet, it's quite eerie and you can't see for, uh, for love nor money. 
and then all of a sudden everyone turns their lights back on and it's just amazing how everything becomes clear everything that comes into into focus Jesus says I am the light of the world he came to enlighten us into God's plan for each one of us God has a plan for your life he has a plan for mine but so often we miss that plan because we're not listening or we can't see our lives are surrounded in darkness Darkness is always synonymous uh, with sin. And it's true in our society that so often sin is, the, is, is, is something that envelops our communities, our society. We have uh, all sorts of uh, incidents that we see that even now through lockdown that are not under the influence of light but darkness. Uh, tragic case in the, in the paper this week uh, about a, a ticket office um, person in, in London uh, and uh, was just serving a, a, a person and the person spat on her and her colleague and coughed in, in their faces saying oh I've got Covid. Sadly within a, a week or so that both of them developed the uh, virus and she died police have launched an investigation where's the source of that that's not a light source that's a darkness source and we see so much of it around us at the moment and uh, our world if we're honest is is dark the words for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God actually talks about the fact that this world is a world of sin not a world of light it's not it's a dark world it's a world that's influenced by uh, the sinful forces Paul talks about us being in a battle our, our battles not against flesh and blood not just against a virus but it's against principalities and powers there are forces at work in our world today that have nothing at all uh, about light in them it's all darkness the devil himself has a, a plan and a purpose in the world around us and it's to cause as much chaos as he possibly can and even amongst disease it causes chaos this is a, a very difficult situation that we are in um, I, I do pray daily for our politicians on all sides uh, I particularly pray for our Prime Minister, I pray for his cabinet, I pray for the leader of the opposition and, and the, the leaders of, of the, um, the, the, the different um, principalities around and countries around the UK that make up the United Kingdom, uh, that they would have a sense of light, not darkness, as they approach fighting this, this virus that we are fighting at the moment. It's not a virus you can see. It's a virus that is causing such devastation to economies, to people's lives, to families, you name it. it it's causing all manner of devastation. And we are told, and, and we looked at this a few weeks ago, that in the last times, this is what we're to expect. I feel at the moment, like uh, as I have done for the last 10 years particularly, I feel like I am going through my teens again when many, many, many services I attended were talking about prophecy and talking about the end times and what to expect. And all of a sudden, when I think people thought that that was probably not possible, we are now not, not only thinking it's, it is possible, but we are actually living through these times. Everything that we are through now is there in the Bible and Jesus says I am that I have come to give you light whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life Do you know, if ever we needed light it's now if, if ever we needed that hope that comes through that illumination of what God's plan is it's now on CNN uh, just uh, 
Wednesday, uh, the, the, they, were, they were talking to uh, a health and well, well-being person. And the health and well-being person said, one of the greatest things we need at this time is a sense of hope. I turned over straight away to the Revelation channel and uh, Howard, and, and I can't remember the other presenter on there, but Howard said there, what, what we need is hope. Without hope, we are lost. We need that sense of hope in our lives. Without hope, what are we? What, what do we have? And Jesus has come to illuminate our lives so that we have hope because we then start to see what's around us in, through the eyes of God and not through our eyes. If we read on in this passage, we will see that Jesus actually um, is challenged on every point uh, that he's making here. They weren't just willing to accept it. Jesus giving the, 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 this whole analogy of being light. That light that went on at the Feast of Tabernacles, which gave illumination to everything in the city. <clears throat> All of a sudden, Jesus is making that analogy. I am that light. I'm the one that can actually show you. And, and one of the things that the Pharisees challenged Jesus on is the validity of his testimony. Let's read on. It says the Pharisees challenged him. Here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I come from and I know where I'm going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But I do judge, if I do judge, my decisions are right, because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written, the testimony of two men is valid. I am the one who testifies for myself, and my other witness is my Father who sent me. Then they asked him, where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple area, near a place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his time had not yet come. Once more Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in, in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is, what, is that why he says, where I go, you cannot come? But he continued, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe I am the one I claim to be, you will indeed die in your sins. Who are you, they asked. Just what I have been claiming all along, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is reliable. And what I have heard from him, I tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling him about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be. And I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. You see, the reason that Jesus can give this analogy about being the light of the world is because constantly he, he makes that statement, I am. Every time he says, I am, he is making the statement that he's God. He is making the statement that he is truly Emmanuel, God with us. And he speaks on behalf of the Godhead. He is the, 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 uh, the physical uh, appearance of of God in human form. So when he speaks, he speaks for the Father, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is, is speaking what the Father has told him to say. They are in communion together. Now, I know for, for, for many, the, the concept of the Trinity is so hard to understand. And uh, just as a simple analogy, is one of the things that I often use when I'm talking to younger people. 
uh, is, is, is that God's creation reflects uh, very much his character. For instance, you know, we, we see everything that, that, that um, in, in, in a state that can either be a, a liquid, a, a solid, or a gas. So take, for instance, water. If water has a, a chemical formula of H2O, if you freeze that water, it becomes ice, which has a chemical formula of H2O. If you heat it up, it becomes steam, which have, has a chemical formula of H2O. It's the same thing, but it's in three different forms. And that's how we imagine the Trinity. God, is, they're, they're all one thing. They're all one item. However, they're in three different forms. Jesus says that no one has seen the Father, but he who has seen the Son has, has seen the Father. Because they witness what the Father is. Jesus is the physical representation of the Father. And he speaks on behalf of the Father. So Jesus is able to validate his testimony and what he is saying. And that is why he says, I am the light of the world. Why? Because he is constantly bringing us a, a, a picture of what God is saying to us right here and now as we put our trust in him as we allow him to take control of our lives so we actually see god's uh, working out in our lives and the lives of those around us i wonder if um th that is, is 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 your experience uh, of of god is that your uh, understanding of who god is jesus came to show us the Father. He came to die to be a saviour for us, but he came to show us the Father and the Father's will. So when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he illuminates our lives, not into the, the, the world around us, which is um, in the main, uh, surrounded and, and shrouded with darkness, but with the light that comes from God. When God shines his light into your life, Darkness flees. We've put some um, new lights just to try out in, in the main hall at church. And three of the lights, and uh, just strip lights onto the beams, actually have as much light shining as the uh, 16 lights, that, or the 12 lights that are already up. Uh, and, and actually it's amazing the difference that it makes. The more the light shines, the further the darkness finds anywhere to find home, a home. Jesus came to enlighten our lives, to shine a light into our lives, to actually help us to remove the darkness from it. He came to take away that darkness and bring us light. He came to illuminate us into the, the, the people that we should be. Uh, and as we shine our lights, it, it, that light shines into our lives and it shines out into the lives of others. And I'm seeing that the church at the moment is so actively working with our local communities and cities and nations. The church, uh, and, and it's been commented on in the press that that uh, more people now have, have accessed online church, more people are accessing prayer um, meetings, more people are accessing uh, just trying to find the answers to the communities that we are in. Why? Because Jesus is shining a light through us. And, and you know, every time we start to shine our light and just allow that light, the light that Jesus says he is, I am the light of the world, uh, shining in the darkness, illuminating people's lives. Though once we walked in darkness, now we have the light of life. As our light starts to shine, so that light gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. I was watching the weather the other day and uh, they happened to show um, the, the different weather maps and I noticed that um, as they were showing the weather maps, um, there seemed to be bright areas when they were showing overnight, they were showing bright areas and it, it got brighter around London and Manchester and Birmingham and some of the other major cities in, in, in the country and, and darker in, in, in the countries. 
and I suddenly thought, oh, well, that's, that's strange, is that, is that the moon? And then I realised, it's the lights that are shining up from the streets. It was almost looking like a satellite picture. Do you know, whenever we shine our lights, wherever we are, all of a sudden, an, a, a little pocket of light penetrates the darkness. Do you know, the more that light shines through us, the more of us that shine our lights, that light, that darkness gets more and more penetrated and the brighter it becomes. That's the picture of Jesus' uh, influence on us and those around us. So my challenge is this, do you have the light of the world living in your life? Is, is, is he at work in your life? If he is, then what are, you, what are you doing to allow that light to shine into your life and into the lives of others? You see, when the light shines, darkness runs away, flees away. So if there are areas of darkness in our lives, then actually we are shielding that from the light. Allowing God's light, the light that Jesus shines into our lives, in, in every aspect of our lives means that it helps us to get that light to flee away. I wonder if uh, you're considering what these words mean. I wonder if you're actually starting to think, well, maybe I can. Let's pray as we close today that God will open our eyes and open our, our, our minds to the possibilities of what his light, light can do through us. So let's pray and ask that we would receive that light again afresh in our lives. But we would be willing to act and allow it to shine even into areas that we often don't want anyone to look at. Father God, we just pray that you would shine the light of Jesus into our lives. Lord, I pray that there would be no barriers, no nothing put up that would stop us from having that light shining in our lives. Help us, bless us, we pray. Lord, help us to be lights in our families, in, in our friendship groups, in our communities, that, Lord, we might truly be lights that shine brightly and that this country, this com our community, Lord, our neighbourhoods would be radically changed because people start to see that light and desperately desire it. So be with us, we pray. Help us, lead us and guide us, because we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please stay safe. Uh, don't forget that tomorrow uh, the daily service will be uh, out somewhere around about midday. Uh, again, big thanks to Keith for all the hard work that he's putting into this. Um, it's it's, a, a, it's a, quite a task to get everything uh, done and, and out to you. Uh, on a daily basis. I know Keith's doing an amazing job doing that, so big thanks to Keith uh, and also to uh, just just to you for watching and keep keep encouraging us, keep praying and if there's anything you need please contact us and we will uh, endeavor, uh, endeavor to to be able to meet that need with you. But we want to pray with you, we want to make sure that we are walking the, the road daily. This looks like it could be a longer term thing. We're, we're looking at some of the guidance that talks about places of worship in July, um, but I think looking at the guidelines, I think we um, could be looking at another six months before we're able to meet fully uh, and as we have done. So um, we need to just be creative and find ways of um, doing this lockdown and, and, and actually helping each other. And that means that uh, church is going to change. Um, but as we think about Jesus being the light, let's just consider how that light is going to look in our, in our community uh, as we seek to reach people uh, with the gospel, the good news of Jesus and the opportunities that this holds for us. So be blessed, be encouraged, keep praying for us. Uh, we are now well over uh, 200 and, uh, 240, 150 acts of kindness that we've been able to do just as a church uh, to help people in our local communities. Uh, and uh, we're just really amazed the amount of contact that we have uh, now with, with folk. And I just pray that that would continue and would grow. And uh, again, as, as a community of hope, we will 
see this through until the Lord comes because we don't know when that is but we know that he is coming so be blessed stay safe and uh, I'll see you at the church service tomorrow uh, and just come with your singing voices uh, I know Keith will have picked some really great songs for tomorrow so every blessing stay safe God bless bye bye